Welcome to No Paint No Gains, I'm Ray. In this episode, I continue to work on painting the models from the Cursed City box set from my Cursed City Summer series. Today, I'll be tackling Ofenkarn's own necrotic gardener, Gorslav the Gravekeeper. Before we start painting, we have to assemble and prepare the model. This is honestly one of my favorite steps in the entire process. There's something about clipping each piece out of the sprue, clearing mold lines, and assembling the model that I find extremely relaxing and satisfying. With the model assembled, we can begin work on the vase. I'll be using Vallejo Earth Texture as a foundation, to which I'll add some fine sand, small rocks, and skulls to increase variety. In painting this necromantic creature, I wanted the flesh to be a sickly green with a hint of blue for a living rot look. To accomplish this, I mixed necrotic flesh, deep blue, and deepkin flesh until I had a mix that I was happy with and applied it as a base coat. To enhance the depth in the shadows, I used a mixture of uniform gray and deep blue in all the recessed areas. I also added a glaze of deep blue in areas like the underarms and neck where I wanted darker shadows to be present. Next were the highlights. I used a mixture of necrotic flesh and deepkin flesh for the base highlights, then went over the highest peaks with just deepkin flesh. I wanted the highlight shadow contrast especially stark to make his emaciated form more striking. For his many skin afflictions, I used a watered down Citadel Druki Violet Wash emphasizing certain sores, scars, and wounds more. The skin finished, I moved on to painting his clothing. I wanted the under portion of his robes to be a deep red. For a base coat, I went with a 2 to 1 mixture of Mephiston Red and Matte Black, mixing in some glaze medium to help with consistency. The upper folds were highlighted solely with Mephiston Red, followed by a very selective secondary highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. For the upper layer of the cloak, I found the perfect color in Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak. I used this as the base tone, then worked in a series of highlights. For the first highlight, I combined Necromancer Cloak with Uniform Gray and applied it to the uppermost folds. I then used only Uniform Gray for the next highlight, making sure to work only within the previous highlighted layer. Finally, I mixed a small amount of white with uniform gray and added that to the most raised areas. I also went back and added some watered down black to the most recessed folds to darken the shadows even further. It's at this point that I decided to attempt non-metallic gold for the first time to paint his headpiece and the spikes protruding from his back. I honestly had and still don't know what I was doing and won't try to explain it to you like I'm some sort of expert. Instead, I'll simply tell you the colors I use and my thought process behind it. I started with a base coat of leather brown from Reaper. I use this color because it has a golden brown look to it and I thought it would work well as a base coat. From there, I started to establish highlights using Averland Sunset. Then I worked upwards to Aerial Yellow and Flash Gets Yellow to build a shiny, reflective look of gold. I also went back intermittently and added Harvest Brown from Reaper to the shadows in an attempt to increase contrast and make the yellow stand out more. As the final step, I added white to the brightest points as well as to some of the edges on the metal. Needless to say, painting non-metallic metal is an incredibly difficult process, and one that I'm determined to at the very least become adequate in. The end result in this attempt looked as good as I expected it to, which is meh. Regardless, I am happy I tried something new and feel I learned a great deal from it. I based the bones of the headpiece and the impaled skulls in leather brown, then used some Ushapti bone for the highlights. I washed all those areas with some seraphim sepia, focusing the pigment on the recesses, and when that was dry, I cleaned up any edges and highlights with Ushapti bone. All the wood portions of the model were coated with contrast paint wildwood. I then used Gorthor brown and leather brown for the highlights, 
and added some serif and sepia to tie them both together. As for the zombie, I base coated the skin using flayed one flesh and then proceeded to tint it using a series of washes. I started with Reichland flesh shade, then used some caribou crimson and even some beel tan green in some of the recesses. I simply kept adding washes in different areas and messing about until I found something that I was happy with. For the metal pieces of the model, such as the shovel head and hooks, I used a base coat of plate male metal. I then washed over all those areas with non oil and added a simple highlight of shining silver. I also splotched on some Ryza Rust technical paint to add a weather and rusty appearance to the metal. As for the base, I wanted to keep it simple and in the same style as my previously painted Curse City models. I based the whole thing in ash grey washed over it with non oil and dry brushed some ash gray and white to pick out the most raised areas. Finally, I added some wasteland grass tufts from Army Painter and painted the rim of the base in black. At long last, I was finished. With this model, I challenged myself to paint it at my highest current capacity. I wanted to see where I was in my miniature painting journey and be able to have something to go back to and compare with future paint jobs. I'm fairly pleased with the end result and gained a ton of insight on all the areas I could improve on. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay messy.